Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A jury trial is held for a woman who was arrested for a little boy's death. Also tonight, another stimulus package is in the works. And the first batch of tax refunds are out. In sports, there were more fishermen and fisherwomen than there were fish. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. There you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, June 14th, 2021. The jury trial for a woman who was arrested for the death of a three year old boy began today. This afternoon, the jury heard opening arguments from Assistant Attorney General Colleen St. Clair for defendant Stacey Lanizu, who is being charged with count one of child abuse. St. Clair states there are several witnesses who can attest to Lanizu committing numerous acts of physical abuse, which eventually led to the death of a three-year-old boy back in March of 2020. An autopsy showed the cause of death was due to obstruction of the airway from illnesses that were far advanced. Doctors believe the boy was sick for quite some time and even showed obvious signs. Lenizo is allegedly known for being the man of the house and all household members, including the victim, were scared of her and did whatever she told them to do. Three days before the boy's death, it was said that Lenizo forced him to do push-ups and count out loud even though he was wheezing and gagging. A week prior to the boy's death, St. Clair states the witnesses said he had diarrhea for four days. And because of the diarrhea, the boy would defecate himself and Lenizo allegedly hit him with a broomstick as a form of discipline. A police officer who responded to the hospital on the day of the death was called to the stand today. The officer stated the boy had many bruises, cuts, and scratches on his back, face, and stomach. The officer also thought that the boy had a cleft palate, but it turned out his lip was just busted. Linizo, along with her partner Lynn Fitio, was arrested after family members told police that the boy was beaten and neglected. Trial will continue tomorrow. 
The Torres Palacios administration is fixing up direct monetary assistance, expected to come out next month. Take a listen. The CNMI Spending Plan for the American Rescue Plan Act has funds set aside going directly to the people. Finance Secretary David Attilik states the governor has allocated over $31 million for what they are calling a local stimulus. The goal is to, to have a program uh, come out hopefully by the end of Janu uh, July, uh, and that is uh, giving each taxpayer uh, at least $500 that they can spend to help their families as we go through this pandemic. Atelik states the plan is to have more than one type of assistance. There are plans to help residents with utilities, rent, and home payments. We're looking at a program that will help our residents with uh, the high cost of utilities, whether we assist in reducing the DX, uh pricing or um, a credit to all residential um, uh, account holders. As for rental assistance, the plan is to reach out to individuals who weren't eligible for previous programs. We're also looking into both rental assistance uh, that fall through the cracks that the, um, the rental assistance program through the CARES Act, as well as ARPA, uh, some some people don't qualify for it, so we're hoping that we have a program that can be able to uh, help those that don't, don't qualify. Homeowners will also get their share of the pie. There is funding from ARPA for the Homeowner Assistance Fund, and the Commonwealth is expected to receive about $4.1 million that we're going to help those homeowners, help them uh, with their mortgages or their uh, support for their a utility or, uh, or, you know, and more guidance will be coming out, but I, I'm happy and pleased to share with our residents uh, these programs that can help our, our Commonwealth. The administration is currently waiting for more official guidance before rolling out these programs. The Department of Finance announced its distribution of $3.4 million in tax refunds over the weekend. The Department of Finance released the first batch of tax refunds to more than 4,000 taxpayers. Over 800,000 of the funds were directly deposited into bank accounts. Finance Secretary David Attilik states this batch is comprised of individuals who filed on time and are clear of any errors. The Division of Revenue and Taxation will also be processing the Recovery Rebate Credit, better known as Stimulus. They expect about $400,000 in stimulus payments to be released next week to over 300 individuals who are still waiting. Taxpayers who opted for paper checks are asked to allow two weeks' time for their check to be handled by the U.S. Postal Service. Coming up, stay home if you can because gas prices are on the rise. Stay tuned. Smoothie of the month for Gold's Gym, Strawberry Mango Tropicana, priced at just $5.50. It includes non-fat or soy milk, strawberry, banana pre-post, strawberries, and mango. 398 calories, 5 grams of fat, 20 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs. Bring your own cup and save 50 cents. Smoothie of the month, Gold's Gym, Garapin. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The Foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism 
will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. You have the flexibility to work out between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. At Gold's Gym, we call this off-peak, and it can save you money. Short-term daytime memberships on sale now, just $59 per month, and gets you access to the biggest and cleanest fitness center on island. Get yourself healthy and strong. Check out Gold's Gym today. We're in a race whether we know it or not. If we all get vaccinated, we can end this pandemic together. And build our new normal. But first, we have to get to the finish line. Enough of Mali, Let's vaccinate, Cinemite! Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The gas prices are up by 10 cents. Over the weekend, Mobile and Shell gas station raised fuel prices by 10 cents. The pandemic allowed gas prices to drop to down to $3 last year. But the new regular gas price of $4.72 is the highest we've seen this year. Prices are expected to continue rising. On Guam, we check in with KUAM to find out what's happening. Hafiday Sinamai, I'm Tyler Matsunani. Here's what's making news on Guam. What do we do when the hundreds of millions of dollars in federal pandemic assistance stops flowing later this year? That's the focus of an upcoming forum that will include representatives from every major business and trade organization in Guam. Nestor Lacanto reports. Since the onset of the global pandemic, Guam's economic survival has relied heavily on mana from Washington. From the CARES Act to the American Rescue Plan, from pandemic unemployment assistance to economic impact payments, the money continues to pour in. But it won't last forever. And so representatives from the GHRA, the Association of Realtors, the Contractors Association, the Chamber, the Women's Chamber, the Chinese Chamber, the Korean Chamber, the Japan Guam Travel Association, and the Korean Travel Association will all be represented at an economic forum scheduled for June 24th at the Hyatt, GHRA President Mary Rhodes. And we just strongly feel now is the time as we're looking at reopening dates, um, and it's really time to build solidarity with everybody and get the economy going uh, together with the government Guam. I know we've had a lot of community-based programs and community-based outreach efforts, but in order for us to reopen the, the economy, but uh, especially tourism, a lot of businesses also need the help. She says we need to look at ways to diversify the economy as a full recovery of the visitor industry is still at least two years out. She adds that competitors such as Hawaii are enjoying a head start by allowing entry with a simple negative PCR test. Many in Guam's industry believe at the very least the governor should already allow in Korean tourists who've taken the AstraZeneca vaccine even though it's not a U.S. approved shot. I know that we're going to have different opinions on that, but if we're going to accept an international market base for our tourism industry, we need to be accept. We need to be able to work through and accept the standards that they've chosen. GVB has said it's expecting the governor's approval soon, and even as we await the visitors' return, there are ways to stimulate the economy with local spending, such as a $500 restaurant card that was pitched before. Now it's time to get those programs going where our residents can go out and support the businesses so we can hire people back at work and get money again recirculated back into the economy. Seating at the economic forum will be limited, but live and recorded streams will also be available. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUAM.com or downloading the KUAM News app available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. All right, coming up in sports, the annual International Billfish Derby survived the pandemic and now it's back to normal, baby.
for the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Did you know Sienemai's coral reefs and seagrass ecosystems are worth about $115 million a year? Coral reefs alone are valued over $100 million a year. All the more reason these precious ecosystems must continue to be protected. Coral reefs are important to the people of the Sienemai because they provide traditional and subsistence uses, production of commercial food products, recreational opportunities for a healthy tourist economy, and physical protection from storms. Do not break or collect coral to take home with you. We need them. Corals are living animals, and it takes decades to create reef structures. Planting trees, grass, and shrubs on bare soil helps prevent sediment from entering our oceans. Trees also help fight climate change. Use a rain barrel and collect water from roofs, yards, and paved surfaces. You can help keep storm water on your property and pollutants out of waterways by building a rain garden. The ocean floor isn't a dance floor. Stepping on corals can break them. Maintain buoyancy when snorkeling or diving. Nutrients from excess fertilizer increases algae growth that blocks sunlight to corals. Coral reefs need clean, clear water to survive. Help keep our beaches litter-free. Always take out your own trash and a little bit more. Anchor in sandy areas away from coral and seagrass or use mooring buoys so the anchor and chain do not drag on nearby corals. Reduce, reuse, rethink, repair, refuse, recycle. Do not feed the fish. Do not take or step on coral. Do not collect shells. Do not fish. Help with local tree planting community events local beach cleanups, and get involved in protecting your watershed. Participate in training or education programs that focus on reef ecology. You can make a difference. Please contact Nina to get involved in community conservation. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Gold's Gym, and today we're going to go over the cable lat pull down. Now, what we want to remember with machine based exercises, there's really no right or wrong way of doing it. There's multiple ways of executing the exercise. What you'll often see is lifters executing the exercise in this fashion, and instead of working the muscles of your upper back, you're just irritating the shoulder joint, which is what you don't want. All right, let's clean that up a little bit. Let's sit upright a little bit more. Okay, as you get a full stretch, bring it down with your elbows coming in. So in general, as you set up this way, you're going to be feeling majority of the impulse right here, which is your lats. Okay. He's getting a full stretch and he's getting a full squeeze in the bottom. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Sports fans, there was a fishing derby Saturday morning, but I think the fish were scared off. Oh well, it only takes one to win, and Hagu real? Well, they are the real deal.
This is where KSPN2 Sports learned how to fish in a Florida phosphate pit with a cane pole and worms for bait. This is where students here learn how to fish. Ha <laughs> ha a lot nicer. The Saipan Fishermen's Association sponsors the Tossie to Table program for high school students. Gene Weaver gives us the scoop. All right, this is more than just Saipan. What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean, we invited Tinian and Rhoda. So we got 14 students from Tinian. We got eight students from Rhoda, along with their advisors, of course, and 11 students from Saipan. So you had to be a student to qualify for this tournament. Yes, you have to be a student that is in the Tacitid Table Fishing Clubs that are in all islands now, Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. Oh, we got some tunas. Yee! Oh, nice. Salty, bandit. Salty bandits. Thank you, thank you. Not much, but at least for the Saturday. At yes. least. Yes. Unfortunately, Saturday, not a good day for fishing. For anyone, it was one of those days. Even experienced anglers struggled to catch anything. When I woke up this morning and I looked out at the ocean, it was really calm. As a fisherman, what does that tell you? Tells me that you gotta look at the tide. When the tide changes, that's the opportunity to catch your fish. Because once it's uh, still like this morning, nobody was catching. Once, once the tide changes from high to low, that's where we got our fish. So even a small fish was better than nothing. Terrell and Austin wanted to get a marlin, but their line snapped, so they had to settle for tuna. First tuna, you gotta be happy about it. Are you, you gotta be happy, are you happy? Yeah. What's you guys, uh, boat, the boat you guys bought? 10-7. 10-7? Oh, 10 oh, that's a famous boat. You know the, uh, the story behind 10-7? You know where that word, that name comes from? All right, you gonna weigh that? Is that your only fish? Yeah. Agu Real caught a hundred pound marlin off the northern coast of Saipan and that blew all the other fish out of the water making them easy winners. Kina catches her first marlin and wins her first derby. How'd you, how'd you pull it off? It was uh, all of us. Uh, just maybe one Even of us to steer the boat, three of them to deliver the lines and then every, all four of them to reel it in. So it was four against one, is that fair? Well, we got it, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, mostly for a good cause, you know, it's um, uh, teaching the kids how to fish, so... Is there a category? I mean, like, uh, is a marlin, you know, we have a mahi derby... Uh... No, it's basically biggest fish. Oh gosh, this yeah. marlin looking good then. So, yeah, so I, I was, uh, I was debating, uh, you know, what, what should we fish for, and I just went ahead and, uh, last minute decision... Go for it all. catch for a marlin, yeah. The next derby, everyone will be eligible to enter. It's the 37th Annual International Fishing Derby. Mark your calendar and cancel all of your other plans for the weekend of July 10th and 11th. Saipan's premier fishing derby will turn 37. The Saipan Fishermen's Association kept it annual despite the pandemic last year when they had a one-day-only tournament with 58 boats venturing out last July. It was Captain Pete Sablon and the K-Fisher crew winning it with a 290-pound marlin that was worth three grand. This year, it's back to the two-day format with a full awards banquet the following evening. While more boats are expected than last year, the record probably won't be broken. That was set in the 20th Annual Derby in 2004 with 102 boats. That was fueled by a $10,000 grand prize. Win Hua from Guam took that money home after reeling in by hand a 519 pound Pacific Blue Marlin. I'm a Marpi uh, um, bank and uh, it took us about two and a half hours to get in. You know, we kind of uh, dive down the bottom and uh, kind of drown so we had to hand line it up. Hand line? We had to hand line it up but it come up tail first. <laughs> wow, is that, is that the biggest marlin you've ever caught? Uh, that's the biggest one you've ever caught. Uh -huh. What are you going to do with the money that you want? $10,000? Uh, I'm going to split with my crew. <laughs> All right. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Mariana's Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. 
Book now at Marianas Trekking. Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. You are looking at Anatahan, located 70 miles north of us, visible today from Capitol Hill. The high temperature day, 89, the low 79, humidity 63%. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, isolated showers, winds 5 to 15, high 89, low 78, seas 2 to 3 feet. Sunrise, 544, high tide at 929, followed by a low tide at 7 past 5 in the afternoon, sunset at 648. And that is your news, sports, and weather for Monday. Thank you for watching. And Hopefully we'll see you back here on Wednesday evening.